Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here. The Olm of the genus Proteus anguinus is an aquatic salamander in the family Proteidae. In contrast to most amphibians, it is entirely aquatic. It eats, sleeps and breeds underwater. Living in caves found in the Dinaric Alps, it is endemic to the waters that flow underground through the extensive limestone bedrock of the karst systems of Central and Southeastern Europe. This animal is most notable for its adaptations to a life of complete darkness in its underground habitat. The Olm's eyes are underdeveloped, leaving it blind, while its other senses, particularly those of smell and hearing, are acutely developed. It is also called the human fish by locals because of its fleshy skin colour. It was first mentioned in 1689 by the local naturalist Val Vassor, who reported that, after heavy rains, the Olms were washed up from the underground waters and were believed by local people to be baby dragons. It also exhibits neoteny, retaining larval characteristics like external gills into adulthood, like some American amphibians, the axolotl and the mud puppies. The Olm is the only species in the genus Proteus and the only European species of the family Proteidae, whose other extant genus is Necturus. The Olm's body is snake-like, 20 to 30 centimetres, that's 8 to 12 inches long, with some specimens reaching up to 40 centimetres, or 16 inches. Females grow larger than males, but otherwise the primary external difference between the sexes are found in the cloaca region when breeding. The tail is relatively short, laterally flattened and surrounded by a fin. The limbs are small and delicate, with a reduced number of digits compared to other amphibians. The front legs have three digits instead of the normal four, and the rear have only two digits instead of five. Its body is covered by a thin layer of skin, which contains very little of the pigment riboflavin, making it yellowish white or pinkish in colour. An olm skin is so thin that the internal organs can be seen through the rear part of the body at times. The resemblance of the colour of its skin to that of white Europeans is why the olm is sometimes called the human fish. However, its skin retains the ability to produce melanin and will gradually turn dark if exposed to sunlight. Its pear-shaped head ends with a short, flattened snout. The mouth opening is small, with tiny teeth forming a sieve to keep larger particles inside the mouth. The nostrils are so small as to be imperceptible, but are placed somewhere near the end of the snout. The Olm breathes with external gills that form two branched tufts at the back of the head. They are red in colour because of the oxygen-rich blood which shows through the non-pigmented skin. Olms live in well-oxygenated underground waters with a typical, very stable temperature of 8 to 11 degrees, that's at 46 to 52 degrees Fahrenheit. At a temperature of 10 degrees, at 50 Fahrenheit, the Olm's embryonic development begins. This usually lasts up to 140 days, but this is somewhat slower in colder weather and faster in warmer water. After hatching, it takes another 14 years to reach sexual maturity. The larvae gain adult appearance after nearly four months, with the duration of development strongly correlating with water temperature. Biologist Paul Kramerer reported that female Olm gave birth to live young in water at or below 13 degrees and laid eggs at higher temperatures, but rigorous observations have not confirmed this. The female lays up to 70 eggs, each egg 12 millimetres or 0.5 inches in diameter and places them between rocks where they remain under her protection. The average size of a clutch is 35 eggs and the adult female typically breeds every 12 and a half years. The tadpoles, when hatched, are 2 centimetres long and live on yolks stored in the cells of their digestive tract for a month. The Olm swims by eel-like twisting of its body assisted only slightly by its poorly developed legs. It is a predatory animal, feeding on small crustaceans, snails and occasionally insects. It does not chew its food, instead swallowing it whole. The Olm is resistant to long-term starvation, which is an adaptation to its underground habitat. It can consume large amounts of food at once and store nutrients as large deposits of lipids in its liver. When food is scarce, it reduces its activity and metabolic rate, 
and can also reabsorb its own tissues in severe cases. Controlled experiments have shown that an ulm can survive for up to 10 years without food. These animals are gregarious and usually aggregate under stones or in fissures. Sexually active males are an exception, establishing and defending territories where they attract females. The scarcity of food makes fighting energetically costly, so encounters between males usually only involve display. A study published in Biology Letters estimated that they have a maximum lifespan of over 100 years and that the lifespan of an average adult is about 68 years. When compared to the longevity and body mass of other amphibians, Olms are outliers, living far longer than would be predicted from their size. Olms from different cave systems differ substantially in body measurement, colour and some microscopic physical characteristics. Earlier researchers used these differences to support the division into five species. While modern herpetologists understand that external morphology is not reliable for amphibian classification, as it can be extremely variable depending on nourishment, illness and other factors. Proteus anguinus is now considered a single species. The length of the head is the most obvious difference between the various populations. Individuals from Stichna, Slovenia, have shorter heads on average than those from Trzic, Slovenia, and the Istrian Peninsula, for example. The only other recognised subspecies is known as the Black Olm, Proteus anguinus parkelli. It is endemic to the underground waters near Tronmelj, sorry if I butchered that name, an area of Slovenia, and smaller than 100 square kilometres in size. It has several features separating it from its pale cousin. These include a much darker skin pigmentation, a shorter snout with more developed jaws, a shorter tail and far more developed eyes. This suggests that black olms only began to colonise subterranean environments more recently and therefore resemble the more basal, surface-dwelling ancestors of all olms. The genus Proteus gives its name to the family Proteidae, a group of salamanders native to North America and Europe. This family contains only one other living genus, Necturus, which are commonly known as mud puppies and are found in rivers across Canada and southeastern USA. Fossil remains attributable to this group date back only to the Miocene, but genetic testing indicates an early Cretaceous origin for the group. The Ulm is extremely vulnerable to change in its environment on account of its adaptation to incredibly specific conditions in the caves in which it lives. Water resources in the underground karst systems are extremely sensitive to all kinds of pollution. The contamination of the karst underground waters is due to the large number of waste disposal sites leaked by rainwater. Among the most serious chemical pollutants detected in the caves where Olms live are chlorinated hydrocarbon pesticides, which are or were used in a variety of industrial processes and in the manufacture of many kinds of materials, along with metals such as mercury, lead, cadmium and arsenic. All of these substances persist in the environment, being slowly, if at all, degraded by natural processes. In addition, all are toxic to life if they accumulate in any appreciable quantity. On the IUCN Red List, the Ulm is listed as vulnerable because of its fragmented and limited habitat and ever-decreasing population. This is a shame as the Ulm is a very unique animal and is a symbol of Slovenian natural heritage. The enthusiasm of scientists and the broader public about this inhabitant of Slovenian caves is still strong 300 years after its discovery. Prostonia Cave is one of the birthplaces of underground biology due to the Olm and other rare cave inhabitants, such as the blind cave beetle. The image of the Olm contributes significantly to the fame of Postonia Cave, which Slovenia successfully utilises for the promotion of ecotourism in the area and other parts of the country. The Olm was also depicted on one of the Slovenian Tolar coins and was the namesake of Proteus, the oldest Slovenian popular science magazine, first published in 1933. Let us hope that this enthusiasm can help protect the Olm from extinction in the near future. Thanks for watching everyone. Next week I'll be covering the Kula Kamba, another African cryptid and a purported hybrid of chimpanzees and gorillas. See you again soon.
Cheerio.